Hello, and welcome to lesson 12, which is going to be part two of the object snaps and O snaps and other modeling aids lesson. All right. So, in the last lesson, we ended up in the, or we finished off in the point snaps. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. The next type of object snap I want to talk about is the midpoint or the mid. So, I'm going to go ahead, go down here to the bottom, check the mid, and you'll notice now when I try and draw a line it won't snap to anything except for the middle of a line so you can see a mid snap you can use on a single line you can use it on a polyline okay so I can snap from the middle of this one to the middle of that one or even up to the middle of that one or even the middle of a curve that has a lot of curves on it okay and then I could snap to the middle of, this is a polyline that's in process, so it can't do that, but it could snap to the middle of that, middle of that, middle of a circle, mm, yep, there you go, middle of a square, and, but not to the end, because I don't have the end snap enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and I'm going to go ahead and delete that guy. All right, so. This next one here, center, or the sen, C-E-N snap, can be pretty good, but it can also be kind of a pain. All right, I'm going to go ahead and select the center snap. The way that the center snap works, and I'm just going to do a single line, is, and you would think, you know, if I'm looking at the circle, oh, I want to snap to the center of a circle. When you try and hover over the center of a circle, you can't actually find the center of the circle. What you have to do is with your center snap on, you have to go up to the object and you want to say, okay, this I want to find the center of this circle. So you have to hover over the actual side of the circle and then you'll get a little dot with a white line and that white line basically shows you where your cursor is and it also shows you where the center of that circle is. So now if I click and I begin to drag out, I've actually drawn a line from the center of that circle. Same thing can happen with an arc, right? I can hover over an arc and it will show me the center of that arc, right? Or the origin point of that particular arc. Okay, now if I go away from the arc, it won't show me the center of where it was. There you go. But if I start my command, I'm going to do that again for you. I'm going to, like, for example, if I want to draw a line, well, the center of this arc, that's fine. Like that. Okay. So you don't actually have to be on the arc in order to draw the line from the center of that arc. Right. Now it'll work on an ellipse as well. So if I hover over the ellipse, it will show me the center of that ellipse. It'll work on lots of different polygons. Right. If you can find the center of it, it will allow you to find the center of it. It'll work on a rectangle. It'll work on a square. But sometimes it will not work on some of these crazy twisty things. So if here it will not, because this is uh, just a little too amorphous, it won't actually find the center, right? So the center is a good one. I'm going to disconnect that one. Now the next one is INT which is an intersection snap. What that will do is it will allow you to snap anywhere that two lines intersect. Make sure I've got that thing clicked. So here there's an intersection and it will allow me to um, start a line there. It will also in terms of a polyline or a rectangle it will find it will consider this particular area here an intersection, that area there an intersection, this area here an intersection, right? It'll consider in a polyline something like that to be an intersection, something like that to be an intersection, okay? So intersect can be kind of useful, right? Now the quad, I'm going to go down here and deselect the intersection, and I'm going to go ahead and select the quad, all right? Uh, I'm, leave, I'm ignoring the perpendicular and the tangent. I'm going to cover those at a later date. But what the quad will do is it will allow me to start a line at, typically on a circle, 
uh, at either 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, or 9 o'clock. Notice, so I'm going to go up to the circle. Nothing's happening until I get to 12 o'clock. There it is. It will allow me to start a line there. I can even draw a line to the other quads in this circle. The quad at 9 o'clock, the quad at 6 o'clock, the quad at 3 o'clock. And repeat that command. I could have just done a polyline, but that's but you get the idea. Now, same thing here. This is an arc. An arc will only have one quad, and it's exactly where, well, if it's larger than 90 degrees, it'll have two, but this is a smaller arc. So it won't actually count this as a quad. It would count that as an end, but it will only count that one particular area there as a quad at 12 o'clock. And you'll notice that that quad is not even the end of that arc. Okay, quad can be a little uh, tough to work with. You'll notice that here, this, is, this ellipse also has quads. Okay. Now, the next command I want you to learn about, or the next O-snap, is the knot. And the knot is something that you'll typically want to deal with when it comes to control point curves. I'm going to go ahead and um, s use the point command on this, right? And a knot you can find in the various positions in... This is what's called a control point curve. I referred to it earlier as a curvy curve, okay? Oops, what happened there on that last one is I missed it. I could just hit Control Z. And unfortunately, because I did all of those points in the same command, uh, when I hit Control Z, I actually deleted them all. If I want those to come back, I could hit Control Y. I could go in and I could select the one point that I didn't want. And I could go ahead and delete that. All right. Now, the next command or the next type of uh, control point or, <laughs> excuse me, not control point, but object snap is a vertex. Typically, you're only going to be using that when it comes to meshes. All right. The last sort of modeling aid I'm going to cover right now is what's called smart tracking. I'm going to, actually, before I do that, before I cover smart tracking, I'm going to show you what happens when you have all of these points selected. Okay. I'm going to select absolutely everything. And now I'm going to go ahead and draw a polyline. Now you'll notice that when you're doing that, especially on something like this, you'll see that a lot of different things can start to happen. You know, you'll see that this is the end and it's a knot, right? Here, it's trying to find the center, the near, the end, the quad, the knot, right? It's a good idea to just have a couple different settings on in terms of um, O snaps on. So I will typically, I always leave the center off because I find that to be pretty annoying unless I really need it, right? I'll typically have end and point and mid on, and that should about do it, okay? Now, the last thing I want to talk about is right here where it says smart tracking. What the smart track will do is it will allow you to snap, it'll allow your cursor to snap or find something that is selected in your object snaps, <laughs> in your object snaps, excuse me. All right, so for example, I can hover over this on the end snap and you'll see there's a little white dot on the end of that, right? And I haven't clicked anything, I've just hovered over it. And now, because I did that and because I had my smart tracking on, it said anytime that I'm directly in line with that particular endpoint that I hovered over with the white dot, either horizontally or vertically, it will allow me to more or less start a line in line with another object, right? So you see now I've this little dot here is perfectly in line with that dot. And now I've hovered over that one. And I'm staying with it. I'm dragging it over. And if I hold down my shift, I can actually get a line that's perfectly 
above that one, right? So if I needed to draw another line that was, for example, if I needed to draw a straight line that was the same length as this, with my smart tracking on, I could go to the command, the line command. I could hover over that, drag straight up, hover over that, drag straight up, start my line, hover over that, drag it straight up, hold down my shift, and I've just drawn a line that's an identical length in terms of the distance from point to point, right? So the smart track can be a pretty awesome thing, and it's one of those things, it's great when you need it, it's a real pain when you don't. So, for example, I want to start some other commands. With the smart tracking on, you'll notice that a lot of times you'll end up getting something like this happening, right? And you're just trying to model something, and it can be very, very frustrating. And the reason for that is it's doing all of your object snaps, all of your smart tracking, and things can just get a little overwhelming. So I can just click down here, and I can disengage the smart track. Other options you have is if you're trying to do something and you've got too many snaps going on, you can go ahead and select Disable, right? And with everything disabled, I could, for example, focus on just one type of snap. If I've got everything disabled and I just need to snap to my end snap, I can actually type in END, Enter, and then that everything else will be disabled except for the end snap, and then that will allow me to snap to the end. I'm going to go ahead and put everything else on. I can also leave all of my snaps on. And if I just want to go to the center of something, even with all of these on, I can type in CEN and hit enter, hover over this curve, and find a center snap. And then I can also snap to the end of something else and to the center of something else by typing CEN, enter. And there it is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the lesson here, but what we've learned about was O-snaps as well as smart tracking. I will see you in the next lesson.